My name is Lucas Holland, and in this series of videos, I'd like to introduce you to the Ruby programming language. So, let's get started. Now, let's begin by finding out what Ruby is. Well, Ruby is a programming language. It's interpreted and fully object-oriented and concise and elegant. Now, let's take a look at Ruby's interpreted nature. Typically, when you're programming, you have source code. That is what you actually write. Now, normally, you just feed that source code to a compiler, which would then create an executable on Windows that would be an .exe file, which you can then run. Now, Ruby works a little bit different. Um, in Ruby, you have, of course, your source code, but instead of running it through a compiler, you actually use a special program called the interpreter to run your source code line by line. Well, both methods have pros and cons. The main pro with compilation being that executables are typically faster than running a program using an interpreter and of course you don't need to have the compiler installed on your computer to run the executable whereas you need an interpreter to run code that's written in an interpreted language. Ruby is fully object oriented. Well, object oriented programming has come a long way since the 1960s and today it's the dominant paradigm. So let's take a look at the basics of object-oriented programming. I'm going to leave out a bit here and just show you the basics so that you have a basic grasp of what object-oriented programming is all about. So let's get started. Well, object-oriented programming is all about objects and without even knowing it we're familiar with object-oriented programming because well, look look around you. Look at your desk. You typically have things on there like uh, maybe a printer. A printer is an object. Or your computer, it's an object. Um, the window in your room is an object. Your bed is an object. Um, a table is an object. Objects typically have methods and attributes. Um, so let's let's. Let's use the printer example I mentioned earlier. Well, a printer has attributes. It has a color, a size, um, maybe a number of buttons, and it has methods like print or scan if it's an all-in-one device. So let's assume we've got a car object and of course it has attributes like its color, its mileage, and methods like drive or brake and number of seats is an attribute as well. Well typically um, you want to have very similar objects. Now you can achieve that by using a class. A class is a blueprint that describes objects. So here we're defining a class car and we're saying that a car has a color and that it can drive. And now we can use that class to create different cars, each of them having a different color. And all of these cars, car 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, are said to be instances of class car. Well, in Ruby, everything is an object. Everything. Integers like 3, 10, 20, minus 26 are objects. Floats like 3.14, 20.3248, or minus 2.3 are objects. Arrays like 2, hello, 3.14 are objects. And hashes like city, Denver are objects. Everything in Ruby is an object, so you're going to be dealing with objects a lot. And that's why it's important to 
at least understand the basics of object-oriented programming. And if you'd like to find out more about object-oriented programming, I recommend that you head over to Wikipedia and read up on it. I'm going to put the link to the article in the, se in the episode description. And of course, strings are objects as well. So everything is an object. That's what's important here. Okay, I think that's it for this first episode. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to install Ruby, the Ruby interpreter, and the standard library on your system. Thanks for watching.